Hallo, mein Name ist Axel Reinemel. Ich bin äh, Engineer und Musikproduzent hier in Berlin und wir sind im Jessanova Recording Studio JRS. Just kidding. <lacht> Hi, my name is Axel Reinemel and we're here uh, in Berlin at the JRS Jessanova Recording Studio and I'm a music producer uh, and engineer and I also perform live. I set up the studio in 2013 in, right in the center of Berlin. The studio has four different recording rooms with uh, different acoustical characteristics. The room where the grand piano lives in is a bit more lively, has a nice reverb Reverb tail. The drum room where I usually record drums is a bit smaller and it's nice, punchy. Of course you can put the drums in the other room, that's what I also do, but I like the dry, the dryness. It's not too dry, but it has a thump. Then there's one other room I like to use. It's very lively, it has a lot of glass in it. I like to use this as a drum ambience room. And the last room, the small room, is also used for a lot of editing. Also, if I need it for band recordings, singer mostly goes in there or double bass or whatever fits in there. And then, of course, we have the, the lounge, which is a nice area to, to chill with the kitchen and a lot of sunlight. The studio has a lot of sunlight, which is not usual for studios. People tell me <laughs> and they really enjoy it. Uh, the kitchen also got used for recordings sometimes for reamping or recording huge drum sounds. So I wanted to create a space where I feel comfortable and that also shows my personality. My wife helped me a lot with it and it turned out great. People really like the atmosphere here. That's what they say. <laughs> Jazzanova is a producer DJ collective. We, we started making music in mid of the 90s, where I was in Berlin. There was a strong club scene where electronic music melted together with jazzy influences and we were part of that scene creating a genre some people call it new jazz sometimes we didn't like that term but in the end it's helpful to put it on the shelf so it was djs and then stefan and i was producing music and then we met each other and they asked us if we could could produce some music together and the first song we did got really great uh, attention uh, in the UK. So there was uh, this radio DJ, Giles Peterson, who's on, always on, on top of the latest music that's coming out. And he was a big supporter of ours. So it took off uh, with this single. It was called Fidimus Flight. We did it all on our own. This is where it started for Jazzanova. So it got international. The DJs were traveling the world, playing all this crazy jazzy dance clubby tunes from Tokyo to LA and Stefan and I were always in the studio producing beats. Before we uh, met the Jasanova guys, we were into producing hip hop. Stefan and I, we grew up in the eastern part of Berlin. So we, Berlin was divided by a wall. The western part was the cool part, the east part was the gray part. But it was so close and my grandmother also lived in West Berlin. so we had a little access to music. In the rest of the East, East German Republic, GDR, people couldn't really listen to hip hop or music that's, that's on the radio in the West or Michael Jackson or whatever. It was really, really rare. So we were lucky that we were born in Berlin. So we had the, the radio stations from the West also, which was a big influence for us at that time. Even our grandmother, she brought us the first record, the Eric B. and Rakim Paid in Full record she bought in the, in the shop. And I think that was really funny, having an old lady buying a hip-hop record <laughs> and smuggling it into the GDR. So, and then the wall came down, which was another really, really, really great moment for us. So we could start buying the first drum machine, the first sampler. And we already in the East, we were playing around with record players and we were scratching and beat matching and mixing and all that. But then then it was, it was totally, it opened our minds. We could we could buy the first sampler, which only had three seconds sample time, the Casio SK-5 it was, I think. But we had great fun doing hip hop music. And then through that, uh, also listening to a lot of records, 
like Tribe Called Quest uh, and DJ Premier, we got into the jazz thing because they were sampling a lot of jazz records. That's that's why somehow we also got connected with, with the Jazzanova DJs. That, that was the path we took. With Jazzanova, we did a lot of remixes for many international artists, but we also were known for, I don't know, Lenny Kravitz, Calexico, Incognito, all these. It was a great time to do remixes at that time because a remix nowadays can only be putting an 808 or putting a 4-4 kick drum underneath an instrumental, but we recorded new material to do the remixes really unique and there were always like long pieces, eight, nine minute pieces that travel from here to there. The soundscapes change and it was big journeys. So we put a lot of effort and also a lot of time into it. And all the music we did with Jazzanova until 2013, we did an, either in our homes at our parents or then we had a studio for 10 days, uh, 10 years, sorry. Uh, it was a quite small studio. It was one editing suite, one uh, control room, which was 20 square meters. It was very small, very hot, no air condition. And one little recording booth where we recorded everything in, but the room was definitely too small for everything. But we did it. <laughs> we used everything what we had. Also, Jazzanova, in 96, they founded, three of our guys founded a record label called Sonar Collective. I got asked more and more by people who got signed to the label to either record their music, mix their music, or co-produce. I, I worked in other studios when I was younger, but this was now on another level. The studio was was not like this. Was not. I wouldn't consider it a professional studio. I had professional gear, but one day I got a call from 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 a management that said, "Yeah, is this is this Exit Studios?" And I said, "Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, um, would you have time tomorrow to record?" with Björk and I was like uh, I'll call you back in five minutes I didn't expect this and it was ah uh, it was a tough decision because I didn't really feel that comfortable in that studio having Björk there or, or like a artist from that caliber but then I've decided I just have to jump into it so I called them back and I said yeah we, we can do it but then in the end she didn't come to Berlin so it ha it didn't happen. But this was a trigger for me to maybe think about the next step. The next step was 2013. I opened up JRS. There was a long journey before finding the right spot in Berlin or finding a spot a little bit outside of Berlin. Thinking about the size, thinking about what I want to do with the studio. I definitely wanted to be able to record bands, so to really capture a performance of many people with the ability to have them recorded separately, the audio. I also wanted to have a studio that it's flexible in its use so that maybe the editing suite is not always for editing, but could also be a recording room or could be another uh, control room or room where you, can, where you can mix in. So that was quite of a journey to also figure out how am I going to do the cabling and how flexible will everything be. So I can take the racks are on multi-pins, I just can disconnect them and put them in another room. can have a small Pro Tools rig over there and work, record the grand piano, piano or drums while in this room other stuff happens. So that was important. And I also wanted to be able to have yeah, like world-class clients here. Like this Björk thing was always in my head. So it had to, had to have, have the nice, the right feel also it was very important for us also. How should the studio look? How can we achieve a certain vibe that also reflects my personality? It's, just, it's pretty personal, the studio. And everything is personal when you make music. 